From Hollywood, it's everybody's game of strategy, knowledge, and fun. It's Pitch Track Show. And now, here's our host, Jim Lowell. very much. Appreciate that. Welcome to the studio audience and to you at home. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Tic Tac Doe. Now, we're right dead smack in the middle of a game between two solid players. I think we should bring them out right now and continue the game. Do it, Charlie. Jim, first our current champion. He's from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. A teacher and former entertainer whose interest includes music and magic. His winnings total in cash, $1,100. Meet Bon Bastogne. And his opponent is a legislative coordinator who once worked for U.S. Congressman, Pete Pat Garrett. Pat Garrett, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? Nice, firm handshake. Did you develop that working with in the political campaigns you and stuff? You need to learn to press the flesh. <laughs> you worked for a congressman. What is that all yeah. about? Well, I worked for a congressman for about three years. I worked in the district office doing constituent services, which basically means when somebody tells you, if you don't like it, call your congressman. Yeah. There has to be somebody there to really help you out and, and try you, and straighten out your problems. You did that. Any political aspirations of your own? Well, I kind of have had a lifelong dream. What is that? Well... Since I was a little kid, I always kind of thought, maybe U.S. Senator from the state really? of California. Really? Well, good luck in those aspirations. Thank you. And good luck here in the game as Thank we you. pick it up and continue. Vaughn, welcome back. Hey, I have a tie just like that. You do? Yeah. Well, we have good taste, don't we? Yeah. Hey, let's uh, get off of ourselves. I want to ask you something. <laughs> you do magic. Yes, I do a little magic. Uh, I've been doing magic since I was about through this high, and I'm about this high. Yeah, well, you must have something. Oh yes, you I can did bring a trick with you. If you observe, you notice here I have a, a bag. This is an empty bag. We haven't met. This bag is empty, is it not? It's is it full. Empty? It's got lots of yeah, things in there. Right. Right. Yes, it's empty. Now notice very carefully. Is that first I place the red ball into the bag. Yeah. Into the empty bag, and then I place the silver ball into the empty bag. And now, as I close my eyes, I've been to the mountaintop, and the ancient wizard has told me the secrets of prestidigitation and transformation before your very eyes, because without even looking, as I reach into the bag, you will see that the silver ball has turned red, and the red ball has turned silver. Hey, this guy is a pro. <laughs> very tricky, Vaughn. Very tricky. Well, let's see if you can make some X's appear for yourself up on the board here as we keep on going. So far, you've picked up $1,100. Let's continue the game. What a trick. Von Baston and Pat Garrett are the players. Now, let's get to it here. Let's check out the nine categories you both were playing with when we broke off last time. Fads and Follies, Showdown, Art, Dropout, Latin America, Auction, Movies, Number Please, Who Am I? Now, let's see how the board looks. Remember, those special categories are indicated by red. Uh, three O's, three X's, and the pot's worth $1,300. Let's shuffle those categories. And Vaughn, it's your turn. Movies, please, for the block. Movies in the middle right, going for a block. All right, Vaughn, take a look at this picture right behind me here. In 1960, this actor made it big with his role in the classic western The Magnificent Seven. And he later starred in the spy spoof In Like Flint. For a block, name him. Coburn. James Coburn is right. He's been around a while, great actor. All right, Vaughn, put an X on the board for a block. We now have a $1,500 pot, and just two boxes remain. Let's shuffle the category. Pat? I think I'll try Fads and Follies. Fads and Follies, the top middle this time. All right, Pat, if you answer this question correctly, we're going to have a tie game. Now, one of the big fads of the early 80s saw millions of people trying to solve this innocent-looking, multicolored, cube-shaped puzzle invented by a professor of architecture. For a tie game... Name this puzzle. Rubik's Cube. Rubik's Cube is right. We have a tie. All right. Well, we're going to have to clear the board and give you nine brand new categories to play with as we get into game number two with a $1,700 pot. But we'll do that right after this brief pause. Don't go away. Welcome back. Our champion and Pat, his challenger, just successfully tied a game, so we now have a very large pot. Vaughn, Pat, you ready for game number two? Absolutely. Okay, 1700 bucks in the pot. Here are the nine categories. Scary things, three to win, heroes, villains, general science, top this, maps of nations, opponent's choice, and musicals. Remember red boxes, special categories? We're starting off game number two. Vaughn, do the honors. Uh, general science, please. 
Center box. You'll have some extra time. Vaughn, a flowering plant lures honeybee. A flowering plant lures honeybees with bright colors and this sweet liquid, which the bees turn into honey. In return, the bees spread the powder necessary for the flowers to reproduce. Number one, name the sweet liquid produced by flowers, and two, name that fine powder bees carry from flower to flower. Here's your extra time. All right, Vaughn, going for that center box. General science, the category, a flowering plant lures honeybees with bright colors and the sweet liquid, which the bees turn into honey. Name the sweet liquid produced by flowers. Nectar. Nectar is right. Name that fine powder bees carry from flower to flower. Pollen. Pollen is right. You have the center box. For the next in the center for general science, two thousand dollars now in the pot. Let's shuffle. Back to you, Pat. I'll take heroes in the upper left. Heroes, the category. Listen carefully to this question, Pat. The heroes of a famous series of books by this author named Horatio always triumphed over poverty and rose to wealth and respectability. Those famous rags to riches books include Ragged Dick and Luck and Pluck. Name that author. Alger. Horatio Alger is right. <laughs> Top left-hand corner gets an O. $2,200 in the pot. Scuffle again. Back to you, Vaughn. Let's try uh, general science again. All right, you did well last time. Here's the question. This woman was among America's foremost anthropologists and also one of America's first feminists. Her most famous book, Coming of Age in Samoa, compares teenagers on a remote Pacific island to youngsters in Western society. Name that controversial anthropologist. Mead. Margaret Mead is right. <laughs> Bottom left, she gets the next. $2,400 in the pot. It keeps mounting. Let's shuffle. Over to you, Pat. Have to try to heroes? Let's go to villains in the upper right. Heroes and villains. All right, villains for a block, Pat. In the Sherlock Holmes stories, Holmes believes that much of the criminal underworld in London was controlled by just one man, this evil professor, for a block. Name that professor. Moriarty. That's correct. You have a block. <laughs> professor James Moriarty. Villains. Gets an O for a block. $2,600 in the pot. We'll shuffle again. Vaughn. Try villains to block, please. Well, look at that. You'll have the same category to try to block Pat this time. This comic strip detective has spent years battling a bizarre array of villains, including Prune Face, Flat Top, and The Mole for a block. Name him. Dick Tracy. Dick Tracy is right. All right, Vaughn. We'll put an X on the board for a successful block for you. That pot is now worth $2,800. Four boxes remain. We'll shuffle those categories. Back to you, Pat. Need to go with three to win for the block. Special category. You're going for a block. You both get to play. So, Vaughn, if you get this box, you'll win your second game of Tic-Tac-Doe. I'm going to read questions to both of you. When you think you know the answer, hit your buzzer. Whoever correctly answers three questions wins the box. The subject this time, Frank Sinatra. I see that your hands are poised on the buzzers. Number one. In 1967, Sinatra had a number one hit with the song Something Stupid, a duet sung with his daughter. Give me her first name. Bond? Nancy. Nancy is right. You have one. In 1953, Sinatra rejuvenated his career when he won an Oscar for his role in this world. Vaughn. From Here to Eternity. From Here to Eternity is the name of the movie in which he won that Oscar. Good for you. You now have two. One more correct answer, Vaughn. You'll win the game. In 1966, Sinatra married for the third time. He married a young actress who... Vaughn for Tic-Tac-Doe. Mia Farrow. She was his third wife. That's right. Congratulations, Vaughn. Vertical tic-tac-doe, an even $3,000 for that game. Added to your previous winnings, you have, completely in cash, $4,100. You excited about that, Vaughn? Absolutely. You have such a <laughs> quiet face inside. I know you're smiling. Well, congratulations. We'll see how well you do against the dragon in just a second. First, 
Pat Garrett, we enjoyed having you on the show. You're a great player. It was a great game. I'm you, glad I was here. You had a, you did well. You successfully tied Vaughn in the first go around. Game number two, he won out. But you're a great player. You leave us with some nice gifts and $250 for tying Vaughn. Congratulations. All right, we're going to be back after these words to see how well Vaughn does against the Dragon. Once again, here's Jim. Thanks very much, Charlie. Well, Vaughn Bastone just, uh, well, you had a tough opponent there, didn't you, Vaughn? Absolutely. It's very fortunate. You played very well. Now it's time to see if you can face the Dragon successfully. You ready? Let's do it. All right. You've done this before. Yeah, all right. You know, behind these numbers are very some amounts of money. There is a tick, attack, and <laughs> the dragon. You want to get the tick and the tack or reach $1,000 or more, and Charlie's about to tell you what you'll win. Charlie, what is it? Well, Vaughn, these gifts will help you enjoy the outdoors as never before. First, Vaughn, for backyard barbecues, you'll use this terrific gas grill. Make your outdoor cooking a no-fuss pleasure. Sizzling steaks and juicy burgers are a snap on this gas barbecue grill, recommended by Chef Pell from the Hardwick Stove Company. Then for camping trips, you'll have these rugged camping tents. Select it with a $300 gift certificate from J.T.'s General Store. Select from fashions, housewares, and much more in the J.T.'s General Store Spring 1986 in-home shopping catalog. Next, you'll watch for birds in the daytime or stars at night through these powerful binoculars. Bausch & Lomb Compact Binoculars, one of the first names in sports optics. Waterproof, fog-proof, and center focus enables you to get closer to the action from Bushnell. And finally, Vaughn, for a vacation where you'll want to be outdoors as much as possible, we're sending you to the balmy climate of idyllic Hawaii! <laughs> then, of sugar cane, coconuts, exotic flowers, and breathtaking sunsets. You'll enjoy tropical sun, golden beaches, and fabulous entertainment when you answer this call to the islands. Some of Hawaii's most spectacular views are from Colony Resorts, Kanaloa at Kona. Elegant villas with full kitchens, wet bars, private lanais, ocean suites with jacuzzis, a world-class resort with swimming and tennis. This outdoor enjoyment package is worth in cash and prizes over $3,150. You like the sound of that? Aloha, aloha. We got a smile out of you when you heard about that trip to Hawaii. Yes, well, I am Hawaiian. You are? Oh, in my heart. In, in my your heart. heart, okay. Well, you want to get that tick and the tag. Remember, you, if you do that, you'll get the dough automatically. <laughs> Gotta beat the dragon. All right. You have, I think, someone in the audience going to help you, huh? Yes, my in brother Pierre. Introduce him for us. There That's he is. My youngest brother Pierre. All right, Pierre, are you ready to help him? What's first? Number two first. <laughs> Number two. Did we think of that? Vaughn beat him to it. Number two brought to 300. All right, what's next? Uh, number five. Number five, right below two. Back. Moving right along. No, I'm just trying to miss it. All right, Vaughn wants to try number six. 100. You need 600 more or six. Keep it going. What's next? Nine. Number nine. All right, let's check it out. Oh, dragon. Well, not aloha yet. Let's find out where the tick was and the rest of the money. The tick was right below the tack there, number eight. Well, still, you're up to cash now, $4,100. You ready to meet your next challenger? Yes. All right, think about that for just a moment. First, we'll take a break. We're coming right back. Time for our current champion, Vaughn Bastone, to meet his next challenger. You ready for that, Vaughn? We. Oui. We, oui, he oui. says? All right, Charlie, bring him out for us, please. Jim, from San Diego, he's a student whose interests include football and writing. Meet Steve Bernard. I think you're getting a rise from some of the women in our audience, Steve. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the show. Tell us Thank about you. your studies. Um, I'm a business major at San Diego State, and I'm a sophomore. From San Diego, does that mean uh, you watch our show on KTTY, Channel 69? As a matter of fact, it does, and that's how I uh, got on the show. I was, I was noticed that the producers were going down, going to be in San Diego, and I won a contestant search, and I'm lucky enough to be here. Well, don't put your eyes, don't cast them down. Be proud. You did well. Yeah. I think it's great to see you here, Steve. I wish you the best of luck. We'll be rooting for you, as we'll be rooting for Vaughn as well. You'll both be playing the game involving these nine categories. Here they are. Names the same, take two, opera, country music, the UN. 
trivia dare, mixed words, seesaw, and sitcom, situation comedies. Vaughn is the champ. You get to start us off. Where do you want to go? I'll try the UN, please, in the middle. Center box. All right, I'll read you this question, Vaughn. You'll have some extra time. I'll describe two important UN agencies that are known by their initials, and you name those agencies. Number one, the medical organization known by the initials WHO, and two, the financial organization known by the initials IMF. Here's your extra time. All right, Vaughn, going for that center box. And uh, I'll describe two important UN agencies that are known by their initials. Number one, what medical organization is known by WHO? World Health Organization. That's right. Okay. Part two. The financial organization known by the initials IMF is called? The International Monetary Fund. You have the center box. I will put an X on the board. $300 box. Let's shuffle. A game between the teacher and the student. Steve? I'll have to go with opera in the left corner. Top left. All right, Steve. One of the best known musical pieces by composer Rimsky-Korsakov is this fast and furious interlude from his opera, The Legend of Tsar Sultan. The speedy music recalls the flight of a certain insect. Name that insect. Butterfly. No, the bumblebee. Flight oh, of the bumblebee. Well, that box will go unclaimed for now. $300 pod, let's shuffle. Get back to you, Vaughn. Uh, let's try opera. Opera. Huh? Opera? Here we go again. Second time in a row in this category. In 1776, this opera house was built in Milan, Italy. The building has seen the world premieres of such classic operas as Turandot and Lucrezia Borgia. Name that world-famous opera house. La Scala. You are right. <laughs> La Scala's the one. Put another X on the board. $500 pot. Let's shuffle. We're back to you, Steve. I have to go with Seesaw for the block. Seesaw category, special one. You both get to play. You want it for a block, Steve. Vaughn, if you get this box, you'll win your third game of Tic-Tac-Doe. Now, I'll read a question with a number of answers to it. You both will Seesaw back and forth, offering answers until one of you misses, repeats, or takes too much time. The other person will then get the box. Now, there are 12 qualities that make up the points of the law of the Boy Scouts of America. We're looking for their names. Steve, you selected the category. Decide who goes first. I think I'll go first. You'll go first. All right. Seesaw is the category. Go. Be prepared. Be prepared. Not on the list. Vaughn, if you can give me any one of the correct answers on this list, and I have 12 here, you'll win your third game of Tic-Tac-Doe and win a grand total of $4,800. What's your answer? Trustworthy, loyal, courteous, kind, obedient. <laughs> you got a few of them there, Vaughn. <laughs> Congratulations. That's right. I should ask you to read, to do the whole thing, Vaughn. It's been a long while. Hey. <laughs> I'm still a Boy Scout at heart. All right. Horizontal tic-tac-toe for you, Vaughn. $700 added to your previous winnings. $4,800. Before I go any further, I guess I might as well, let's, let's take a look at what this list really is. Brave, cheerful, clean, courteous, friendly, helpful, kind, loyal, obedient, reverent, thrifty, and trustworthy. Those are the 12 qualities of the Boy Scouts. All right. We now have an opportunity for you to play against the dragon in just one moment, Vaughn. But first, we have to say goodbye to Steve Bernard. Went kind of fast, Steve, but we liked having you on the show. Well, it was my pleasure. I'm a... Uh... Give our regards to everybody down at KTTY in San Diego and hope you had a good time. It's a nice gift for you, Steve. Good luck to you. We're going to come back and watch Vaughn take on the dragon right after this. Better intimate care. Well, we're going to have to find out who your next challenger is going to be when we come back on our next show. Vaughn, how are you feeling right now? I mentioned before I was a little uh, suffering from insomnia. I don't know in this contest whether I should choose a fabulous dinner with Joan Collins or a million dollars, and it's, I can't go to sleep thinking about that. Oh, is that Can your you problem? Can you believe Bob? that? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that. Well, look, as a teacher, you've probably uh, picked up a number of your answers that you've successfully gotten boxes with because you know a lot uh, being a teacher, right? 
I'm much older than I look. Oh, you are, are or you? Or am I younger than I'm old? Or something like that. <laughs> well, we'll find out in our next show. Congratulations. You'll come back with $4,800. We'll see how it goes. All right? Uh, I'm Jim Baldwin. I'll see you in our next Tic Tac Go. You'll love Ziploc Easy Zipper. The stakes are high. One mistake and Chris retains the championship. So it pays to go slow. Breathe right there. Play your cards right. And you might win the show. Lower than the queen. Yeah! On Card Sharks, Wild Game, Witty Poetry. Next on Game Show Network. Tic Tac goes to Jack Barry and Pan Enright Productions.